This is the video review of the T101 MT. Um, let's go ahead and start with a keyboard comparison on this device. Um, so this is this is the size of keyboard you're going to see on this particular device. Um, this is an older model EPC. Let's go ahead and compare them side by side by side. This is actually the 901. The keyboard is actually a little bit lar larger on the T101, but it is a 10 inch. And uh, comparison to a full size keyboard on the UL50 shows that it's they're um, pretty close. I'd say about 90% of the full size. So, let's see, um, performance and battery life on this thing. Well, I haven't done any performance tests on this thing yet. Well, true full-core performance tests. But I do have the, um, I can do the system rating, which will give a benchmark or a milestone for a few people that use that particular, um, uh, particular, uh, num those particular numbers to compare systems. Um, let's see here. Okay, there we go. Um, there's the uh, system performance on this thing the 2.5 for the processor, 4.8 for RAM, 3.5 for desktop, aero, and 3 for gaming performance, and 5.3 for hard drive. I would like to point out that this thing ships with the Intel GMA 30, uh, 3150, which has no um, hardware decoding built in. This device cannot do 720. Uh, high definition decoding, and it also cannot do high definition YouTube as a result because there is no hardware decoding built in. The older model of, the, or the smaller model, the T91 with a slower processor, does have a GPU capable of doing hardware decoding, and that exact setup is capable of doing Hulu 720 uh, video off your computer and probably uh, about 720 YouTube as well. This device, however, can only do standard definition because of that oversight on their graphics card, which, in my opinion, was pretty stupid because this GPU works better in gaming, but I personally would rather game on a different system like my UL50, which is a uh, low-power notebook but has a dedicated GPU and an integrated GPU so I can switch between them and actually game on it if I wanted to. I wouldn't want to game on this. I'd much rather watch video on this when I lay in bed or something because you can throw the screen sideways like this or on its back and have it flat and actually lay down and watch stuff on it. The other thing I will point out about this system is there is a drifting issue. Uh, this is actually on the left or the right side of the screen not the left. I have the screen upside down actually right now. But there's a drifting issue right around in here. It's off just a little bit. And it tends to go down the side and it's just off just a little bit. Um, I've seen every... Uh, there's My brother has a model. It's the same system. We both bought them at the same time and his has the same issue. I actually had to send mine back because my screen would not calibrate. I couldn't use it at all. But this one I got back works um, pretty good. I, I haven't had any issues with the screen as of yet. Now, as of for screen, actually seen in the sun, kind of hard to see in the sun because um, the resistive layer actually does take light away. But I mean, as long as long as what you're looking at isn't black, you'll probably be able to see it. But if it's black, you won't be able to see it in the sun. Um, I was trying to work on this thing while I was actually in cloudy weather and I couldn't see, I couldn't read the screen, but I was working on, on something that was black and someone, something white, I could see. And that was with brightness at full. Okay, so another thing um, people are curious about is um, like web surfing. Well, this device works pretty good for web surfing. You, got, you can do the uh, finger scrolling, which is pretty good, and the, it's really hard to get to work, but the zoom in and zoom out and you have to, there's a slight delay on that so you when you do it you have to be careful also ignore the fact I'm looking at alienware <laughs> um, but you can do the you can do the scrolling like this and that's actually stock in Firefox so if you wanted to know that that, that that's um, no big deal um, it you don't have to like go find some fancy driver or whatever so anyway I, I'm 
I have this thing upside down, and I'll show you why I have it upside down. I don't use the Skype very much, but if you do Skype, you're going to have to put it right side up. But the reason why I have it upside down is I tend to put flash drives or a Bluetooth device in this thing. And if I'm holding it like this, that Bluetooth device is in my hand, as well as my hand is covering up the vent and the microphone and headphones input. And if you are like Skyping with a headset or something, or you're trying to talk to somebody while in tablet mode, and well, audio Skyping or whatever, um, just audio, no video, that would be in the way. Also, the other thing is, is it keeps these the back ports out of the way. So you can, you can have your Ethernet free, you can have your two USB free, you can have your VGA free, so that when you're using the device, they're not pressed up against you, your chest, they're out in the open. It also keeps the speakers pointed at you, which is an addition, um, pretty helpful. These speakers are uh, rather directional, as I've understood, and as I've seen myself. Um, I don't have any really performance things to show you at this point, but I will show you the Microsoft Surface Collage to demonstrate the multi-touch ability of this thing. Um, it's a little bit laggy on this device because of the fact that this is only a 1.6 GHz Atom processor. It's not, or 1.66, I apologize. It's not exactly a workhorse processor. It's it's designed for um, very light web browsing, text editing, and some other light programs. I have done some more high-end stuff. Um, as you can see, this is kind of laggy. But I've done some more high-end stuff on this thing. Like uh, I've done some a little bit of photo editing. I've done some audio editing. Um, it, it can handle it. It's a little bit laggy depending on how in-depth you get. Um, I definitely suggest the 2 gigs of RAM in this device off the bat. Um, a lot of people have issues with that, so look at my other video, the unboxing video. I actually talk about um, how to deal with the RAM when it doesn't work. I also talk about how um, a lot of people have been having issues with it, so go ahead and watch that video if you have issues or wondering about the RAM. Um, this button, actually, I, I, I got rid of Starter Edition. I recommend you get rid of Starter Edition immediately. It is completely useless. But this button, when you first get the device, actually lets you change between the hand resting mode and the pin mode. And let's go ahead and switch that by tapping it. And we can switch it up to pin mode. Now, as you will see, my finger can no longer drive the screen. So I can rest my palm on the screen, and I can still use it demonstrate that better so you can actually see my palm is resting on the screen and I can still work on the screen and when you're drawing when you're doing like Windows Journal it is a little bit lagged when you're doing that it has it has actually a little bit harder of a time keeping up with your your uh, your pin and it's a little bit less accurate when you have when you have your palm on the screen but it's still capable and it's kind of nice if you really want to take notes and you want to rest your palm on the screen, it's nice to be able to rest your palm on the screen and still be able to draw, which is a nice little feature. And um, this button up here, the reason why I pointed out, this button normally if you tap it, does that. Now it actually does the um, touch gate thing, which in my opinion is a waste, but if you want the glamour of that, you it, there's actually something you need in it. So that's why it's actually installed on it. It's, um, I can't. I think it's the, one of the pin things I need. But anyway, you got this, and you can mess with that. Um, let me switch to finger real quick, and oh, I gotta go back up. I hate this. I, I really. I find that software really stupid. Um. But also, um, this button controls the rotation. Now, as I shall demonstrate now. It's showing you rotating the screen. Doink! And the screen is now rotated again. So you press and hold it for three seconds and then keep holding it until it gets the orientation you like. Which is really nice. And one last thing before I close this off is this power button. Okay, this is my thumb trying to close it. I was pushing this about as hard as I can. The only way you can physically close it is if you grab with your fingernail that or grab this lip. That's the only way you're able to hit that power button. Anyway, this has been the video review of the uh, T101MT. I will do a performance review later. This was just my first um, quick little review of general usage and pointers for people who might be interested in buying it.